welcome to church tonight. Let's turn to 215, hymn number 215. Help me out this evening singing, Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Justified fully through Calvary's love. Oh, what a standing is mine. And the transaction so quickly was made. When as a sinner I came, took of the offer, grace she did offer. He saved me, oh, praise his dear name. Amen. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. And I receive. Sing it out. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole, my sins were washed away and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down. for singing that today 197 sing and i go along life's road we'll sing uh 197 we'll stand on the last word verse for a word of prayer the trusting heart to jesus clings nor any ill for most but at the cross of Calvary's praise god for
to Buzz and Hope Baptist Church. Good to have you all back. Uh, we are out of town for Thanksgiving, so it's good to see you all again. So, all right, we don't have any uh, prayer requests turned in. Of course, we in prayer for Preacher and Pastor uh, Darren Whiting. He'll be here for Amen. Sunday. Looking forward to having him and also for the Christmas, can, not cantata, the banquet. Cantata is a different time. Don't want to confuse those. Choir, we're having that on this Saturday. No, don't worry about that. All right, we'll pray for our preacher, and we'll get into the announcements. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you, Lord, for uh, the Thanksgiving time we were able to spend. Several of us got to be away and be with our families. We do appreciate that very much. Thank you for that which you have given to us, Lord. You have given us so much here in America. We are, we are so blessed. We do appreciate it very much, Lord. Please help our pastor. As he's at home recovering right now, give him the strength that he needs. Please heal him. Help Pastor Whiting as he's coming, Lord, for Saturday and also for Sunday as he's preaching. Fill him with your spirit and power, Lord. May you get the glory and honor for what's done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you may be seated. All right. Uh, I just got a few announcements. Uh, any ladies interested in decorating the fellowship hall are welcome to come this Friday, December 2nd, from 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. A nursery will be available. You can see Mrs. Lauren Walton. For a question, if we have any questions with that. Also, the food sign-up list still needs to be filled out. So, ladies, if you could check that out, I'd appreciate it for that. Uh, also, a preacher had this uh, request. Please fill out and turn in the ministry information sheets on the back table back there. They need to get those things in here pretty soon. And if we can get all those things done tonight, as soon as we get done with prayer time, if we can go back there, if we haven't filled them out yet, we can get those things turned in. That would be a blessing. Uh, this Saturday... Of course, the Christmas banquet will be at 5 o'clock, the most wonderful time, and it will be a wonderful time. I always enjoy this every year, getting, being able to get together with the church family and have a good dinner like good Baptists do. Amen? All right. Well, we'll uh, just That's all the announcements for right now. There you go. 423, hymn number 423. Joy to the world, we'll sing 423. <laughs> the page 424. O come all you faithful. Ushers come on the last verse of this song.
Thank you, sweetheart. Appreciate that. All right, turn your Bibles, please, to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10. If we all stand, please, for the reading of God's Word. First Corinthians chapter 3 and start in verse 10. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. And let's pray. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to preach your word. This is not something that's taken lightly, Lord. This is not a small thing. This is a great responsibility. And I pray, Lord, you please help me as I'm preaching your word. Do a work in the hearts of the people, Lord. For some, this message will be uh, something they already know, but for some of us, Lord, it will be some information that might be able to help them down the road. And I pray, Lord, you please apply it to the hearts as you see fit. Help us to be obedient, Lord, and do what you would have us to do, Lord. May you get the glory and honor for what's done. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Jesus Christ, of course, is the chief cornerstone. He is our foundation, and without him, all else would fail and fall. Life will not be a success without building upon Jesus Christ. We must follow God's word and learn and be obedient to his will if we expect to have a good life here below. God created us with a free will, and that is a line that he will not cross. Because he has given us this great power, we must be careful as to how we exercise that free will. When I was in kindergarten, I had a Sunday school teacher by the name of Judy Weddle who brought um, some building blocks to Sunday school class. And it was a small church. I was the only kid in the class. And she brought them, and she started stacking these building blocks that she had to teach me the importance of making right decisions. As she built them, she let them fall over sometimes to illustrate what would happen if I made wrong decisions. And we're going to look at three building blocks that I think hold eternal consequences to our lives. The first building block is choice. Uh, turn in your Bibles to Joshua chapter 24. Joshua chapter 24. Joshua chapter 24, and we're starting verse 14. Now therefore fear the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood, and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Everything we do in life involves us making choices, making decisions. It will affect everything else that we do in life. The governing force of this world is not the government, but the choices of the people, the, the choices that the people that live in it make. The consequences of those choices will shake out one way or another. For instance, many of you chose to eat dinner before you came here. How many of y'all enjoyed your dinner? Every man's hand should go up if his wife made it. Amen. <laughs> we chose to eat dinner. Y'all can call Pastor Ross for marriage counseling for you men if you didn't raise your hand for that one. We chose to eat dinner. We chose to get dressed and come to church. We chose to get in the car 
We chose to come here tonight. We chose what pew to sit in. And we are going to choose tonight whether we're going to listen or not. Everything we do involves making a choice. My choices that I make in life will determine how people remember me at the end of my life. It will determine what I will accomplish in this life, what I will build, how happy my life will be, my legacy that will leave to my children, and all those other things. For those in authority, be it a parent, a preacher, or a politician, we need the wisdom of God to make the right decisions because our decisions will affect those underneath of us, and we need to make the right decisions so that the consequences of our choices will have the most positive impact on those beneath us. Ultimately, for the Christian, our choices, however wise or foolish, will determine our rewards or lack thereof when we stand at the judgment seat of Christ. So what kind of choices can we make? We have the choices of decision, what to do or where to go. We've got choices of allowance, things we do not resist. We just allow things to happen. We got choices we choose to allow it to happen. We got choices of permission, what we allow others in our control to do when they ask us. Such would be our children, uh, workers in ministries, for, for you Sunday school teachers or bus workers, those who are in a position of fellowship. Choices of approval. Uh, choices of consequence. What we choose based on how our own or someone else's choices affect us. And September 11th, 2001, our nation had to make some decisions about how some other people's decisions affected our country. Choices of speech. What we decide to say or not to say, whether good or bad. Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. What we choose will affect other people around us, and we understand that. There are all kinds of choices out there, but we must make sure that the choices we make are the right choices in each situation because choices is the first building block of life. The second building block is belief. Mark uh, 9, verse 23. And Jesus said to him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. William Clark said this, more persons on the whole are humbugged by believing in nothing than by believing too much. You can go out and you can knock on any door you want to around here. You ask them what they believe about woke philosophy being put in our schools. Ask them what they believe about transgender philosophy being taught to our children. Oftentimes, they'll not tell you what they believe. They'll tell you what, they, what their opinion is. They don't believe. Most people don't believe in much. Another person said the, per, the, the belief system of a person is the guidepost of his life. There is a difference between values and beliefs. Values are nice opinions. Right. Beliefs will cause you to make certain decisions. We choose what we believe. That's why choice is the first building block. Because we choose what we believe. Everything that has ever been preached from this pulpit in the past almost 50 years of our church being here has been weighed in the balance of whether or not we are going to choose to believe it or not. Isaiah 53 verse 1. Who hath believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? The arm of the Lord is revealed to those who believe the report. We, off, we choose what we believe. Our choices control our beliefs, and our beliefs then should control our choices. But sometimes we have certain beliefs about certain things, and because of external influence or something else, it overrides our beliefs, then we end up making a wrong decision. Have we chosen to believe on Jesus for salvation? Do we believe that Jesus is God the Son and the Son of God? 
Do we believe the Bible is the inspired Word of God? I was in college, and you got to be careful who you have in, but preacher thought it was a good man, and he was a good man, but he was under the influence of someone who was teaching wrong doctrine. He held up his Bible, and he said that you are a fool for believing that this is the inspired Word of God. Hence commenced for the next year, Pastor Fugit strongly ingraining into us in every single message that the Bible is the inspired Word of God, and it is inspired. If it's not inspired, then it's expired. Get rid of it. It's an inspired Word of God, and it's profitable for our time. Do we believe we are to do what God commands us? Do we believe that He will hear us when we pray? Are we living in a way that He will hear us when we pray? Do we believe the promises of God? Do we believe that He loves us? And there's a difference between believing that He loves us and knowing that He loves us. Some more questions. Do we believe that it's sinful to listen to country music, rock music, or rap music? Is it sinful? Do we believe that? When I was a teenager... They were, in the music world, they were combining country music and rock music. And so the combination was croc, like crocodile. So when I was working on a job up in Elgin, there was a young man there, and he was going to work for a uh, music group, what do you, what do you call this? Um, a band. There we go. He was going to go work for a band, and there was a band that was going to combine country music and rap music. <laughs> so if country and rock makes croc, country and rap make what? And that's exactly what that music is. I didn't say it. Your mind went there. That's exactly what that kind of music is. Amen, amen, and amen. Is it wrong to listen to that kind of music? Do we believe that it's sinful to look at pornography? Amen. Ecclesiastes 1.8 The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. According to this verse, once a person gets involved in sins of the eyes or sins of the ears, there will be no satisfaction. A person who is involved in that, they can't see enough, they can't hear enough, they always want more. There is no satisfaction. Do we believe it's sinful to drink alcohol? Do we believe it's sinful to smoke cigarettes or chew tobacco? As popular as that is today. Do we believe it's sinful to shoot drugs? 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 and 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For you are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Fuller once said, he does not believe that does not live according to his belief. Our choices control our beliefs, and once our beliefs are settled, our true beliefs will determine our choices. Our beliefs are vital in the fact that they determine our convictions about what is truth and error, right and wrong. It also determines our actions and our reactions. Sure. If we don't have any beliefs, if we don't believe anything, then anyone can do anything that's not going to affect you. But if you have certain beliefs and someone goes against those beliefs, then you're going to be like, hey, that's wrong. That's why we believe the Bible. That's why we have the Bible as our guidebook for life. Because it teaches us what's right and wrong. And if we live according to that book, we will know what is right and what is wrong. This may all sound a little too deep, or too basic, rather. And it's a very, very simple thing. Many of you, I do not have a whole lot of experience in life myself. I've not lived that long. And many of you could tell these things to me. Just because you've learned them already. But some of us who have not learned these things or just need a fresh reminder, it'll be good for us. But what we believe will also determine the direction we will go and what we will do in life. For example, what I believed determined my choice for a wife. Okay? I believed 
that the girl I would marry should be saved. Amen? She should go to church faithfully. She should be involved in the ministries. She should tithe, dress according to biblical standards. She had the right music standards, have a good spirit about her, and we should believe the same doctrinally, basically. But my beliefs about what she should be are not enough. I need to have my own beliefs about what I should be. Belief in keeping myself pure for my wife. Belief in dress and music and vision standards. Belief in appropriate behavior around the opposite gender. There's a way to treat a lady respectfully. Belief in the safety of having chaperones on our dates because I don't trust this stuff. Belief in the six-inch rule. Belief in our first kiss being at the marriage altar. And it was. Amen? If we don't believe anything, then all we have is opinions. Belief determines right and wrong while opinions are neutral. There is no right and wrong when you have an opinion. And when someone says that your beliefs are just your opinion, you need to settle whether or not it's your belief or whether it's actually just an opinion. If it's just an opinion, you can throw it out. If it's a belief based on the Bible, you need to hold on to that thing for dear life. So the belief, so we have choice is the first building block. Belief is the second building block. And the third building block is obedience. Obedience. Turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 6. The choices we make, the beliefs we have, will determine whether or not when we build on Jesus Christ, if it's gold, silver, or precious stones, or if it's wood, hay, or stubble. Romans 6, starting in verse 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness? But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. It is important to make the right choices and to have the right belief standards, but I can make all the right choices mentally, and I can have all the right beliefs, but if I don't obey what I should do, then I'm not going to get anywhere. All that will be in vain if we're not obedient to do what is right. If you can find a person who will be consistently obedient, will work hard with a good attitude, then you have found the most valuable employee in the world. Obedience. Some notes here about obedience. Obedience to God is the surest proof of our love for Him. In John 14 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. If we love Him, we will. When we find ourselves disobedient to God's commands, then we must admit that our love for Him has waned. Secondly, our obedience or disobedience affects other people. Romans 5.19, For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made, be made righteous. Most of us in this room have little eyes watching us. Whether you are a teenager and you have younger kids underneath you, they're watching you. Or we are a parent and we have kids of our own, we have eyes watching us. It is not enough for me to tell my child not to do something and then they turn around and see me doing the exact same thing. Somehow, my four-year-old child hasn't figured out that you can do certain things legally once you turn 18. Which is a big, fat lie of the devil I don't care what it is, you are not allowed to drink alcohol when you turn 21 according to this book. You're not allowed to smoke cigarettes once you turn 18 or be immoral when you turn 16. That ain't right and never will be right according to God's laws. If it's wrong now, it's wrong 100 years from now. If our, kid, our, if our, if our kids see us do it, then they're going to believe that it's okay to do and by the way, if they see something bad on TV, 
and you don't say anything against it, then they're going to think that's okay. And if they see something bad on TV and you do say something against it and you keep saying something against it over and over and over again, then they're going to start wondering, why are we watching it? Our obedience or disobedience affects other people. So we have a, the blessing of obedience. Obedience, I mean, just basic life, folks. Obedience will advance you in the workplace. You got an employee. I mean, several of you, you have uh, employees, people underneath you, but the rise of you own your own company. When you got some employees and they're not doing what you tell them to do, what do you do? You fire them. Obedience will advance you in the workplace, but if you have a worker that's working hard, shows up on time, has a good attitude, if you've got a position that you need filled to advance them, you're going to pick that guy rather than the guy who doesn't show up on time. Obedience will grow you in the faith. It will get you honor and respect. It will cause you to be blessed of God. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest live long on the earth. It will, get, it will cause us to be blessed by God. And if we not just obey our parents, if we obey God, he'll bless us for that too. Amen? It will give you a happy home. If I go off as a husband, and I go off and engage in things that I shouldn't be involved in, disobedient to God's word, I'm not going to have a happy home. We have to obey God's word and be obedient to what God has commanded us to do if we're going to have a happy home. Another thing is kind of humorous, but it'll keep you out of jail. <laughs> Everyone needs to go to Bible college. You get some awesome stories. <clears throat> there was a fellow. The rule was at Commonwealth, you had to be back in the dorms by 1 o'clock in the morning. And so there was this group of guys. There was two guys, two different cars. And they were got off late. They worked about 20 minutes away. They got off a few minutes late. And they were flying back to the college because it's 10 demerits if you don't get back on time. And so it's 45 miles an hour down Versailles Road, or at least it was back then. One car got away, the one in front. The one behind was caught going 95 miles an hour and got pulled over. Obedience will keep you out of jail. I don't know if he went to jail or not, but I don't think I saw him the next day. The curse of, and there's the curse of disobedience. It will cause you to get fired from your job. Rebels don't care about God. It will bring you shame and contempt. It will cause you to be cursed by God. It will make your home miserable, and it can end you up in jail. Basically. In the beginning, our choices determine our beliefs. And then our beliefs will determine our choices. Then we must choose to be obedient to God and to His Word Every time. What choices are we making each day? Do they line up with the word of God? Are we submissive to his will? How about our beliefs? Is there anything we need to strengthen tonight? There's, I mean, you guys, you folks have the same amount of time as I do. And we do what we want to do. And there's plenty in this book here how it talks about all the different standards. And you can study those a lot faster than a preacher can preach through them all. And we can study those, study those at home. How well are we being obedient to the will of God in doing what we're supposed to do? There's many different avenues that this could go to. There's too much to go through, too many things to point to to apply them all. But the Lord can do that. So we have choices, belief, and obedience. These, I think, are the three building blocks of life. Let's pray. Father.